Was Chuck Norris really reluctant to star in Lone Wolf McQuaid? As always, if you like this content, please hit the subscribe and like buttons so I know to continue making these videos. Lone Wolf McQuaid was released in 1983 and has many similar stylings to spaghetti westerns of the 60s and 70s. Even the soundtrack takes many cues from the likes of Ennio Morricone. In fact, director Steve Carver had met Sergio Leone and wanted to emulate his style of filming. Lone Wolf McQuaid opens with McQuaid foiling a Mexican horse smuggling operation on the Tex-Mex border. Not content with just shooting at them, he then wanders down and kicks their ass with his karate skills. This opening scene really sets the pace and style of the film and was apparently written by John Milius after some financial backers were unhappy with the original script. From there the movie reveals that McQuaid is a man of few words, he's happily divorced and has no partner, in both life or the Rangers. He also doesn't do things by the book and he's on the outer with his superiors. Because of this, he is forced to partner up with Ramos, a local Texas state trooper, to rein in his lone wolf ways. Ah, oh, and he really likes beer. Whilst taking his daughter horse riding, he meets his future nemesis, Wilkes, played by the ever-cool David Carradine. Later on, when McQuaid's daughter accidentally witnesses an arm deal, as well as seeing her boyfriend killed, she is left for dead after her car is pushed into a ravine. McQuaid and his new partner track down Snow, a troublemaker who has details on the arms deal. When McQuaid leaves Snow with his close friend Dakota, yep, that's really his name, Wilkes arrives and kills them both. Ramos, who is also there, manages to hold them off and survive. The FBI arrives in the form of Special Agent Jackson, and after some initial reservations, they start working together. This combined effort leads to Wilkes, who they discover is hijacking military convoys and selling the captured weapons to the highest bidder. When a raid on the hijacker's compound goes wrong, McQuaid is left for dead, buried underground in his truck. This doesn't stop him however, and after a quick beer, he kicks in the truck's nitrous and explodes out of his shallow grave. Wilkes has also taken McQuaid's daughter hostage and crossed the Mexican border. McQuaid, Ramos and Jackson attack Wilkes and his team, which leads to the final showdown between McQuaid and Wilkes, man versus man, karate versus kung fu. McQuaid obviously wins the day, gets his daughter back, and they all roll back into Texas. Chuck was initially reluctant to grow a beard and drink beer on screen for the filming alone with McQuaid, as he wanted to be a positive role model for kids. Norris has been a Christian since he was 12 years old, which makes this initial reservation make sense. His movies have always had a certain style of their own, and I don't mean that in a bad way at all. I guess his characters use violence only when required, and none of it is particularly gratuitous. I'm glad he took on this role, as it's a solid film in Chuck's catalogue. Prior to this, he was a movie star, but after, he became a cultural icon. David Carradine is excellent as Wilkes. Having fell in love with martial arts when filming the TV series Kung Fu in the 70s, he looks competent in taking on Norris for the film's climactic fight scene. It makes for a great contrast watching a Kung Fu fighter take on a karate champion, which Norris was throughout the 60s and early 70s. The fight scenes are great, but certainly not choreographed like today's modern blockbusters. To me, this gives it a little bit more grit and realism, although I know some may find them lacking in any tension. There's a strange love story in this movie, which is not even worth mentioning, other than it could have been cut. Along with another strange character that's straight out of a Bond film. Apart from these two anomalies, Lone Wolf McQuaid is the film that really cemented Norris as an action movie star throughout the 80s, especially for me. His next film was Missing in Action, and from there it was on to classics such as Invasion USA and Delta Force. Chuck Norris has been the source of many a meme in recent years, and this is one of the movies that kickstarted his fame.